All right, so on this episode, we're going to do something that's really important for any turbo build, and that is part of the plumbing. We're going to be drilling the hole for our oil return. So your oil comes out of your engine, goes down through the turbo, and it just gravity feeds back to the engine. So your return bung, wherever it returns into the engine, has to be lower than the bottom of your turbo. and hopefully it's a relatively straight shot you don't want like a kink or like a big loop in your pipe you want that oil going straight back into the engine so that you don't get it building up and burning and having it overflow blah 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 you need that oil to go straight down through the turbo and straight back into the engine one of the other reasons why i chose to put the turbo up higher is because if you put it in the stock location you have to drill into the oil pan with my turbo mounted up higher I can drill into the valve cover and it's a whole lot easier it took me two minutes to go pull this off the car now I'm gonna drill it and insert my fitting now this is a 5 8 barb to 3 8 NPT male fitting obviously it's a 90 degree fitting and it's brass I got it on Amazon for about 750 so here you can see pretty easily this is the passenger side valve cover and there's plenty of room between the valve cover and the frame rail to be able to fit a fitting right here now obviously you probably wouldn't have room to fit a straight fitting coming out so you do want to get a 90 degree fitting so if we look on the back of it I don't really want to drill through one of these ribs so we're gonna go ahead and put it right here like I said, there's plenty of room for it to stick out right there. As long as we don't thread it in too far, we won't hit the cam and we won't have any issues. I think I'm going to want mine kind of facing in that direction. So I really like these step drills. Um, I just got these from Harbor Freight. It's a pretty good deal. They're kind of expensive, but they come in a three pack and they work really well for this kind of a thing. Um, so this one's still sharp, so I'm just going to kind of drill into it a little bit and then on the final bit we'll go grab another drill bit that's big enough and run it through. So I'm going to use a center punch and we're going to go right here in the middle. There is my center punch. So my drill bit has something to grab on and it won't just kind of wander. If I can get my oil to come out. These things are from Harbor Freight and they suck. I don't buy one. There we go. And there we go. And now we have a really nice hole. Obviously it's not big enough for this yet. I'm going to go grab another bit and we'll drill that out one more step and just thread this right in. Dang it. That was a bad idea. Yeah. I went to 11 sixteenths and I meant to only go to 5 eighths. And that sucks. But it's not the end of the world. So what I'm going to do. is uh, JB Weld the crap out of it. <laughs> yeah, you only want to go to a 5 8 and then just real crank on it, grab a crescent wrench and just thread it in there. Um, I don't know what I was thinking. It's late. Don't do this kind of stuff late at night because that's a dumb idea. Anyway, I guess the other thing I could do now is just go get a 5 8 barb with something that's bigger than that and thread it in. I'll think about that. Anyway, peace out. Alright, last night I was super tired and uh, yeah, I didn't know what I was thinking when I drilled that hole. Luckily, I just went to Home Depot and picked up a 3 quarter to 5 eighths 
just a little adapter and then drilling that out to the next size up which is a three quarter inch hole is going to work out really well so i just have it sitting there and i haven't started threading it in yet um, many of you are going to ask what are you doing just screwing it in without tapping it now the tap for this is probably about 20 bucks just for the tap and it would only put in probably two threads through that thickness of aluminum and it's aluminum um, so it's going to be pretty easy to just screw that in um, I'll screw it in and then pull it out wrap the crap out of this guy with uh, Teflon tape and screw it back in and we'll be good to go so I got it started um, and I'm instead of using a crescent wrench I'm using it's a big 21 um, and I just have a 17 just kind of hanging out or a 19 wheel lug nut hanging out in there and I'm just screwing it in going in all right there we have it it's cut off it's pretty flush and now it's clean so we're all set to screw the other one in and get this back on the car. I'm going to clean it off first and uh, wash the gaskets in just soapy water because they are new and so I'm just going to make sure that they're clean and stick them back on. Yes, yeah, so that didn't work. Um, when I screwed it on it was way too far out and there was no way it was getting past the frame rail. So I'm just going to go to the hardware store and get a plug to just screw into there and plug it and then I'm gonna drill a new hole over on this other side because there's way more space for the uh, between the engine and the frame rail and might as well right there because there's lots of space right there there's no cam sitting right there I don't think I need to go check again but that's gonna be a better spot it's higher up there's way more space in the frame between the frame rail and the engine and uh, it'll work out because right now I'm just wasting time okay so now we're going to plumb the oil feed I've just removed my alternator there's a bolt that goes through here that looks like this with this dealio on the back it sits like that pull that out and then you're gonna pull the bolt out that sits right here on this tensioner and that slides through this other side you don't have to disconnect the alternator just pull it back and you'll be fine because we want to get to this this is gonna be um, probably the easiest way to get oil. So this is the oil pressure sensor and we're gonna take it off right now because the oil feed line that we got has a T so that we can run this and an oil feed. When you get there you should find something that looks like this. It looks the same? Yes. Okay so now what we're gonna do we have uh, this T that came with our oil feed line um, and we are going to make sure it's going to fit. So if I put this back where it's supposed to be, like that, somewhere in there, it looks like I'm going to have plenty of space. So I'm going to Teflon tape every connection because the last thing I want to have to deal with is oil leaks down underneath my alternator. There you go, nice and firm, not too tight. You are threading it into an aluminum block and it is brass, so don't go too tight. You will be unhappy if you do. And we'll do that.
There we go. Now, we thread this dude in there. All right. There we go. If I shove that sensor wire back on and see if I can make this work, just kind of routing underneath the intake manifold. Here we go. That'll do what I want. If I can get this to stay out of the way of everything up front. Here we go. So, oil feed is done, oil return is basically done, I just have to get a hose for it, uh, and then I need to plug that with a plug. Um, now, um, once I get the turbo up in here, I need to figure out what water lines I want to tap into. And there's a water line right here which would be a very easy one to tap into. So these are the waterline hoses from the TDO4. Um, and I think this is gonna be too small. I mean, I could make it work with a couple of fittings. I guess either way I'm gonna have to get fittings. So I might as well just use this guy right here because it's easy enough to get to. So I'll, I'll probably end up just cutting that at some spot, put an adapter hose that fits this and do that for both sides and then just hose clamp those together and I'll be done and that'll make it really easy so plumbing is basically done I'm going to now take care of 